What is happening budget builders and welcome to the GMC Motorhome Rescue. This is a 1973 GMC Motorhome that we rescued off of an abandoned piece of property. This thing was in horrible condition. We got it running, we got it driving, we brought it back here and we completely gutted the thing. We've been rebuilding with all new modern things that you'd have in a new camper, turning this thing into something that we can enjoy as a family. First things first, let's address a few things on the outside here. Let's move into the inside because we're going to completely rebuild the original bathroom and then we're gonna start up here on the front cockpit area. I know some folks have been asking why we didn't have all six wheels and tires on here well these were the last two these were actually the inside or the the rear ones so this was to the inside on the rears of the 66 needless to say they were terrible so way more work we had to put in these to even make them look decent they look nice but they're not perfect but i think they'll do just fine we had to get in there we had to go ahead and wire brush all the crud off we had to sand it down we used a 320 to get all of it mostly smooth and including the ribs that were on it from the machining work and then after that we went ahead and hit it all with wet sanding 1000 grit da hand sanded the bits we couldn't get to then of course we polished it and this is what we've got We obviously read every single one of your comments and we appreciate it so much. We had a lot of suggestions about locks for these. Obviously, with the weight of both batteries and the tanks, just walking around this thing, they're rated to hold this, but they're not rated to keep it latched in. So we definitely don't want this stuff pushing through that door and flying out into an oncoming car or traffic or something. So what I got is some little gate latches here. We should be able to latch that. And I'll probably go this way. What's funny is it latches one and then it'll latch the other. And then it'll keep it from coming on out. Much better, much safer. Awesome suggestion, everyone. And I had noticed a few comments about the batteries and as far as them dissipating and everything and leaking off, the lead acid that we did stick in there were just was just a temporary, for the time being, they were actually for something else anyways. And it was just to verify our system was working and everything. We plan to stick something different in there. I don't know if we're gonna use AGM or lithium, probably whatever works best with the solar, which I think, uh, I think either probably a lithium might work best. Been putting it off because really don't want to dig in here but i think first things first we need to dig into this bathroom it's the last nasty thing in this motor home let's tear everything out of here let's keep clean it up let's revamp and revive this little space i'm really hoping we can take this off without dealing with what's in there. Might as well get that out of there first. Go ahead and get all of this stuff out of here. There's a little bird's nest. Hopefully there's no eggs in there. I hadn't seen them coming in and out. And let's get this thing cleaned up. I'm not getting no turd particles in my lungs. <sighs> Thank you. 
get this thing out of here. You'll probably hear the AC running. It's a little warm today. It made it all the way up to 80 degrees. So we need some AC. hopefully be able to use this original toilet flange but obviously with our style toilet we need to see if we can actually take it and turn it What's nice is all the wood down there is super solid so we don't have any kind of we didn't have any major leaks or anything the reason we had to at least remove this is because it needs to be twisted for the new toilet I say new toilet the toilet out of the other camper but this flange is also all bent up from that toilet rocking over the years we might want to do something a little bit different I think our next step you notice some of these stress cracks here and thankfully that is the worst of it in here. The reason they're there is they did not put any kind of support or anything up underneath that section of floor. They left a huge gap. It's got a piece of like three quarter inch plywood, but there's nothing on either end. And so this whole end just floats. And especially as this thing is aged, that is just asking for. So dad went ahead and pulled the face off. We dug everything out and now we're going to go ahead and get a couple support boards up there and that'll take care of the rigidity of the bottom. I've noticed a lot of people do like a, like a teak wood bottom and that's really not addressing the root of the issue. And so we want to go ahead and get that taken care of. We were thinking about doing something similar, but I think the wood that we do have, we're going to use in another location.
probably wondered what we're doing here. We ran two boards up in here, trimmed them out. Well, when they did this, they left this big gap. And even though this board isn't horrible, the big gap is just gonna cause that toilet to rock. And nobody wants a rockin' John. everything out of here, our final piece to remove and our first to reinstall is going to be this fan light. Well fan, it'll be a fan light. This thing is in horrible condition, not just down here but up top. And so we went ahead and just got a new updated version because I figured that would make the bathroom. Oh, look at all this pollen. Anybody else love pollen? Clean it all with yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. There ain't nothing wrong with that fan. Yes, Need some mud dauber. Woo wee, that'd be in a bad day. Go this way. Go this way. Here, grab him by the tail. I ain't grabbing him. <laughs> He's a big boy. I told you, that's what I said. size rat snake. This is the Max Fan Dome. So this is Max Air, just like the other fan that came out of the camper, except this one is a little replica doohickey. Well, I guess I'll leave that on there. <laughs> it's kind of a replica of what was in there. The little dookie fan with the wire. But what's neat about this one is it's got an LED light that goes up around it. And so this will add I don't know if we even need it, but it comes with it. We'll put it in there. Got a nice updated but OEM look. Cute little LED light. Fan goes up. Let me test it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> With it cleaned out in here, I think we can go ahead and start putting some stuff back in. But one thing that I'm really excited to see with it all cleaned up is everything seems to be in really good shape. One thing being a lot of these seem to be kind of brownish, yellowish, pretty grody looking. I think that's when people take the time to get in there and try to dye them or paint them. This one surprisingly looks really nice as far as color wise goes. 
and so I don't think there's going to be any problem there. One thing that we do have an issue with is a couple cracks here on the sink, but we have a way that we're going to attempt to take care of that. In the meantime, I want to go ahead and work on a few things up here, like taking care of these lights. I was looking at some different ideas as far as maybe making plates or something, but the easiest thing we found got on Amazon, and I think I've got something that'll work in there. These are the Amazon special. Hopefully these will work out nice. They're 14 by five and a half, which is exactly what we need to cover this. And this is gonna be the easiest solution. Obviously we want to spend as little as possible, but lighting, especially in the bathroom. Yeah, I think that'll work out. Now we've got that light. Whoa, my goodness. <sighs> now that we've got some lighting, I'd like to go ahead and start reinstalling a few odds and ends as far as our accessories in here. So we went ahead and just bought an inexpensive 30 something dollar Lowe's stainless kit. It's actually pretty nice for what it is, I would say. The reason I did that is the only thing we had in the other bathroom was this. And we want to be able to put the original towel rack back in over here, put our little hand towel, doobie hodger there, and then our toilet paper hanger thing down on the inside. We racked and racked our brain on how to cover that countertop and make it look nice. We really like the material they use in the campers, that plastic, kind of like in the kitchen, that, uh, that plastic fake granite look, but you cannot buy any of that. And so realistically, the easiest thing to do is wood. We could try to glue together and make some kind of panel out of like a teak or something, but that's just gonna take so incredibly long for something so simple. So we've got this piece of birch paneling. This is a $13 piece of paneling from Lowe's where they glue it together. We're going to cut it down, trim it up, route it out, try to make it look good on there, and then we'll seal it extremely good. And I think it'll do okay. It might end up being a temporary thing until we can find something different. We figure it's at least worth a try. So let's, uh, let's get this thing trimmed up, sealed up, and put in that bathroom.
Okay. Still unsure about the top side, but I would like to go ahead and epoxy resin the bottom side because we know this will give us a really nice good seal. We might end up doing all of it this way, but I want to at least see how it looks. As nice as the doors are, I think we'll go ahead and make some new ones. And so this is a material that's super reasonable that we purchased from Lowe's. And I just feel it's got kind of a neat look to it, kind of a teak bamboo-ish look. I think polyurethane, this will actually have a really neat look and we should be able to cut this up and pretty reasonably have new doors. That's like clear, clear. secure that countertop I'm gonna go ahead and scuff up this whole tabletop so we make sure we have nice good adhesion in comes the brown glue I guess it's as a gonna be considered permanent after this There's definitely major precision in the way that I'm laying this glue. I think we like it. I hope you guys like it because <laughs> it's going in. And what's pretty neat is our faucet and the drain 
the nuts are going to be accessible because we made them go right up underneath. And so if we need to access this part of stuff to seal up, we obviously can. Now I'm scared to work in here. With things starting to tie together in here, we were trying to figure out what to do on the floor because it obviously has some issues and we'd like to kind of tidy things up a bit here down there. The problem we had considered maybe doing wood, but it would just end up clashing with everything. We already have a couple different things going on here that seem to tie in nicely. So what we decided to do is a C-deck material. Now obviously this is not C-deck. C-deck you cut to size, you order it, it'd be like $400 for one little piece of C-deck to go in here. This is the Amazon special stuff. That's, uh, that's obviously the way we're going is quick, easy Amazon stuff. We ended up going with gray instead of a wood colored one because it might just end up clashing and hopefully this will look okay. I think that'll look really nice. We're going to continue using every little bit of that parts camper we can even I mean, what i just forget what this thing's called what is this thing oh shower even the shower curtain <laughs> nice it's kind of dark in there how's that feel is that nice now i can't sleep i had to light up for a reason I feel like one thing dad and I have noticed tearing this thing down, the fixtures and stuff are pretty nice that they put in these. And I think that's why the cost is what it is. But as far as assembly goes, wow. 
The GMC has already been around for 51 years and it's going to be around for many, many years to come. There's no way this camper would still be around in 51 years. Everything else addressed, our last piece for this bathroom is obviously the shower. The shower was in the bathtub of the other one and separate. So you've got all this goofy mess. Everything was pretty nice fixture wise other than this, the little white shower thing. Now with that being said, if we're gonna have to drill a few more holes to add a shower in here. See, the thing was the original one ran through and was plumbed into the back of the sink over here. And I'd like to make it look as good as possible and as functional as possible. I hate to, I feel like we can probably sell this with the shower to help pay back towards this fixing up of the shower, of the bathroom. And so we went ahead and it was only $29 on Amazon, of course. Again, I feel like everything we buy for this, which is kind of nice. It works out one day shipping for each of the little things we've bought so far. So here is a shower. And as you can see, all it is, is the hookup for this. And it's the stainless to match or the plastic stainless to match. <laughs> and I think we'll just go ahead and mount that centered up right there in the back. And then we'll obviously have access to it back here. I think we might leave like a little bit of an access door or something behind the panel that we put on the back side, and then we can hang this up and we'll have hot and cold water to our shower. And I think it look, should look pretty tidy. Or should you go down? So I think you should go down a little bit more. Okay. Well, there we have it. Bathroom is pretty much complete. Pretty happy with that install, and I think it should work really nicely. Obviously, a towel will hang here. You won't see it anyways, but it looks pretty good in there. Not perfect. None of this is obviously perfect. It's old. We're attempting to bring it back. We have no idea what we're doing, but we're trying our best. I'm really pleased for the most part with the outcome of the bathroom, taking this nasty old tub here and turning it into this right here for pretty pretty reasonable but for less than a few hundred dollars being able to turn this bathroom around into what it is obviously if we had to buy all of this new all these fixtures and the toilet and everything it would have been way more than that starting to realize that that part camper is helping so much with turning this thing around. But with the bathroom finished up obviously we need to work on the door there but that'll come as we start working on cabinets and stuff. I think we move back to the front area here. We really need to be to the point where we can start moving this thing around a little bit more again. I'd like to go ahead and tag it and insure it. So we need to figure out our seating. We need to figure out our fuel system, our brakes. But for the time being, let's go ahead and start cleaning up here. I want to sound it and everything. And we still have a lot of cleaning that we have to do up here.
Now, just to add a level of comfort protection while we're driving, we're of course gonna be going in here with sound deadening. This is Silas, Amazon special, pretty reasonable. This is what we use in everything. And even being a thin mill, which is nice because you're not worried about too thick of stuff that you're having to work around. This stuff goes in nicely. It adheres extremely well. We've never had an issue with it coming off and makes a massive difference in sound as far as the interior goes. So let's go ahead and get all of this laid out in here. Big difference. Fifty two square feet did that entire front area. And I mean, we had to use every single last piece. Obviously, we still need to do the engine hatch, but the majority is done and taken care of. And realistically, at the end of the day for sixty dollars, that's really not too bad for sound deadening to knock out that entire front compartment. That should be pretty nice going down the road. This thing's already crazy quiet with the engine hatch on here. You're not even gonna hear that 455 running anymore. Now it's time to go back in with our door panels. They're surprisingly in actually really good shape. This one is missing a big section here in between the ashtray and the mat tray. We don't need an ashtray and we don't really need a mat tray anymore. So we're gonna use the same technique we used in the bathroom the door panels are pretty nice. The tops are not. Let's make a little bit of... It's so windy out there. Let's make a little cap for it. And I think we'll go ahead and include a cup holder as well. So that'll give us a, a little bit of added usefulness out of these door panels. This is a little ridiculous. It's ridiculous, I tell you. <laughs> if any of these trees ever come down, it's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> Things we do for a video, right? <laughs> <laughs> We had to move into the shop. It is so ridiculously windy out there. Uh, thankfully we got a little bit of room here. We moved some cars around. Here is the, uh, the nail head just about put completely back together. So our next video will be on the Buick here. We're ready to fire this thing back up. Maybe see if we can take it for a little spin.
Oh yeah, a dark stain cup holder. I think that'll be pretty sharp. We do want to go ahead and cut it. We want to stain it. We want to go ahead and seal it up, but we don't have those cup holders in yet. And I hate to make the wrong cut and then have to remake this because it's pretty intricate and quite pretty time consuming, but $17 worth of wood between the two of these, everything else we have here with us other than the cup holders, which are only about $9. So for us to be able to save these door panels, which are remarkably expensive, just by doing this, I think is well, well worth it. Let's go ahead and make that other side up. But I think that's going to, uh, I think that's gonna be all we can do here until we get these finished up. Obviously the screws will come in from the side and that'll pull everything. These things have warped so much. But I think that'll be, uh, that'll be pretty nifty. Not perfect by any means, but I do think it's going to help to tie this entire front, the entire front cockpit area together here. Now one thing I'm, we're kind of having a tough brain fart with here is carpet. We had said shag. Shag's probably too much, but maybe it'll look good. We've been running around looking at different options online and stuff, and it's tough to figure out how the inside and the carpet and the upholstery is all going to flow together. So I think, honestly, we might should leave it like this for now until we do more in here. So first thing in next episode, I do think that's gonna wrap it up. I'm sure some, I wanna get this video out. I want you all to see an update on this thing. Some of this stuff is just so incredibly time consuming. First thing in next episode, we'll work on the dash area a bit more, get all this dialed in. We do need to go ahead and get the brake booster put in here. It's a little aggravating on this one, but we want to start being able to drive this thing, move it around, take it up and down the road. Now that we have all the suspension and everything taken care of, and then in our next episode, I'd really like to go ahead and get all of our plumbing taken care of. With that being said, I think we should go ahead and start working on our kitchen. I'd love to get all of those appliances and everything put in here, all of our plumbing taken care of, so that can be done. All the last little tie-ins here of our electrical. And then it's gonna be just walls, seating, upholstery, cabinet, I guess there's still a lot. There's still a lot, but that'll get us moving forward. That's one of our last big, huge hurdles is taking care of the whole kitchen area here. But I really hope you all have enjoyed so far. We're having a lot of fun with this one. It's a definitely a big, big, big project. If you ever think about doing anything like this for yourself, be prepared. This is, it's, it's big. Even the way we're doing it, it's not like it's a full restoration. It's pretty close, but not completely. I really hope you all have enjoyed. And if you have and you haven't already, you want to see more on this rescue rebuild, all of our will it runs and other rescues, restorations, be sure to subscribe button notification bell to keep up with our future uploads. If you have been a part of the channel, we do appreciate it so incredibly much. We're getting to bring this thing back to life for our family to enjoy because of each and every one of you. So thank you all so much. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.